Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a $220 Windows PC from Acer with a 14-inch display. This is the Aspire 1. The exact model is A11431C4HH, because there's a bunch of different configurations, but this configuration is the least expensive one I found so far. We're going to be taking a closer look at this one, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing a bunch of low-cost PCs hitting the market over the next couple of weeks. This is the time of the year they tend to emerge, so I hope to find some more. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has a 14 inch display, which is rather large for a PC at this price point. It's also, if it's not readily apparent, that it's running at 1080p, which is also a great thing at this price point. But, and there's always a but with these computers, uh, there is not so great of a viewing angle on this display. This is a TN display, uh, so it's a pretty lousy uh, display unless you're looking directly at it. So once you go off center here, uh, you'll lose a lot of brightness and contrast and everything just kind of uh, washes away. So you really need a direct uh, point of view on this screen. And if you've got a tablet with one of those high resolution displays or even a phone with a high resolution display, this is going to look pretty lousy next to it. But if this is all you're looking at all day long, as long as you stay centered on it, I think you'll be okay. Not the brightest thing in the world, but again, this is a $220 PC and our expectations have to be set appropriately on these things. It has four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, which is great. A lot of these $200 computers just came with two gigabytes a year or so ago. So good to see that we're getting into uh, better memory for doing multitasking and whatnot. But you'll be limited in that multitasking because it only has 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Again, another trade-off uh, for these little PCs. Now, unfortunately, there is no way to upgrade the RAM or the storage on this one. I took it apart. It was actually pretty easy to get into the case, but uh, the RAM and the storage are soldered onto the motherboard so there is no upgrade path for those two items. Now this one is powered by a newer Intel processor. This is called an Apollo Lake chip. The part number is a Celeron N3450. It is a quad core chip and it's a pretty substantial performance boost over prior generations of this low cost hardware. There's also no cooling fan on this one so it's completely silent and as you'll see in a few minutes it's actually a pretty decent little performing laptop given the price point. I'm quite pleased with what I'm seeing out of the performance there. It weighs about 3.6 pounds, so it's a little heavier than it might look, uh, but it's all lightweight plastic. It's not metal or anything fancy here. It's got a nice uh, rigidness to the plastic, but uh, it is a plastic case, and again, about uh, 3.6 pounds or 1.6 kilograms. The battery life on it, because it has one of these power sipping Intel chips, is actually pretty decent. Uh, they advertise about nine hours, and we started running now the PC Mark battery test on this uh, on all the machines that I review, and our results were coming in around where the marketing was. So if you're doing office tasks and web browsing and the things that they recommend you do with this kind of laptop, I think you'll get close to that nine hour mark, probably around eight or nine hours, depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, the keyboard actually feels pretty nice on this one. I'm not usually a big fan of the Acer keyboard, but it looks like they've made some improvements this year. So uh, the keys have decent travel on them. I'm not having any issues typing as I'm uh, doing what I'm doing on the computer here. Trackpad is also pretty decent as well. It tracks very nicely, very sensitive. It's got multi-touch gestures here. It is a click pad and uh, seems to be pretty responsive with that. The keyboard is not backlit, but again, you're paying 220 bucks and that is what you're going to get. Uh, you got a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. And this was really interesting to me. They managed to fit a full-size gigabit ethernet jack into the side of this thing. So you can plug it right into an ethernet network if you're at a college campus or just in your house or whatever. That was really nice to see there. HDMI out here, USB 3. There is an SD card slot here, and I was hoping that uh, the card would sit flush to the computer so you could get some extra storage put in, but unfortunately, it does not. It'll stick right out on you like that, so it may not work so well as a secondary storage location if you're finding the 32 gigabytes isn't enough for you. Headphone microphone jack here. You've got two USB 2.0 ports over here along with some uh, status lights that indicates uh, power and uh, charging of the battery. And as you can see here, the display does go flat. And this is kind of a safety feature because a lot of times these computers end up with kids and if they push the display back too far, you don't have to worry because it'll go flat to the desk here, which is uh, pretty decent there. Nothing on the bottom. There's no fan here to worry about, so that's a good thing. The speakers are on the bottom. Decent stereo separation, not the best sounding speakers out there. There's also a webcam in the center here for video conferencing and whatnot. Again, just a basic webcam. It does the trick, but nothing too fancy there. So that is the overall hardware. Let's take a look and see how it performs. 
So let's kick things off with some web browsing. We've got the 1080p 60 video running from my YouTube channel. It's running without any drop frames and uh, functioning as expected. These low-end Intel chips actually do a very nice job with video playback, and here is no exception. I do recommend using the Edge browser on these low-cost PCs for browsing higher-end video versus Chrome. And if you use Edge, this is the performance you can expect from it. I've got some reasons why I like to use Edge, which I'll put down below in the video description with another video detailing all of that. I also ran some web browsing, just basic web browsing on it. We took a look at nasa.gov and uh, the web page sprung up very quickly. And because it uses AC wireless, you'll be able to use uh, some newer wireless technology with it also. So no issues on web browsing. And it did feel a little snappier than some of the prior generation low cost PCs we've looked at. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, I got a score of 32.8, uh, which is a pretty big boost over the Atom-based devices we've looked at recently here on the channel that come in around the same price point. So this Apollo Lake architecture for uh, doing the kinds of things you'll do on the web uh, will definitely feel a little snappier than some of the other low-cost PCs we have looked at here. And Microsoft Word also feels a bit snappier on here too. We took a look at our usual newsletter template here. So I think this computer will do quite well with uh, some light desktop publishing and all of the other office tasks that you might throw at it. Now, $200 computers are not gaming computers per se, but they can run some games quite well. We'll start off with Minecraft as we always do, getting around 25 to 30 frames per second on Minecraft. So not the best performance from what I uh, would expect to get out of one of these Apollo Lake processors. I should note also we have the Optifine performance enhancing plugin installed. I think what's happening here is that the RAM on the computer is in what's called single channel mode. And if they had dual channel RAM on this computer, we would see a, a pretty significant increase in graphical performance. So it is a little hindered by that, but uh, Minecraft is still very playable on this computer. I also checked out Half-Life 2, which is an older game, but older games do really well on these uh, low cost computers. And this one does better than some of the prior generation $200 computers did. In fact, I was getting 60 frames per second and more in some scenes of that game. Uh, the more complex scenes, I was still at a very playable uh, 30 to 35 frames per second. So you're not going to run anything modern on here, but there are a ton of great old games and emulation, of course, uh, that this computer will do quite well with. And I was very pleased to see that we could run a very playable Half-Life 2 session at 1080p with all the settings turned down, which is something we really couldn't do too well on some of the prior generation hardware. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 2,544, which is significantly better than what we saw on the HP Stream 11 from this time last year. That one is also a $200 computer uh, running with last year's uh, version of this particular processor. So a nice big bump in uh, CPU performance specifically on this device where we went from 2.12 frames per second on the physics test to 5.44 frames per second. That's a pretty big bump. The graphics scores are a little closer, but again, I think if this had dual channel RAM, we would see better scores than what we ended up with. I also had a few folks asking me on my extras channel about an HP laptop that I reviewed last year. It was also $200. It was probably the best deal uh, from last year's crop of low cost PCs. That was the HP 14AN013NR. Uh, that was powered by an AMD chip. And this new one from uh, Acer actually uh, comes close to matching what we saw out of that machine last year, as you can see from uh, the results there. So oftentimes there are computers that just don't get marketed that tend to be really good deals. And that HP computer was one of those examples. It's no longer being manufactured, but we do need to keep our eyes out to see if we can find any more uh, stealth deals like that. It had a very nice display, much nicer than this one. It was an IPS display, and you can see my review of that link down below. Now I've got Kodi loaded up right now, which is a great open source video player because I wanted to see how well it can handle high bit rate video. And if you are an enthusiast of video, you're going to appreciate this. So this is a 140 megabits per second 4K HEVC file at 10 bit. This basically replicates what you might get out of a 4K Blu-ray file. And if I hit the enter key to start the video off here, uh, check it out. This is playing back just fine. Now this will choke on any of the uh, prior generation $200 computers that we've looked at. Here it is running as well as it does on some of the new generation KB Lake processors that cost a lot more money than this one does. This is really uh, pretty astounding that we're able to get uh, this high bit rate video uh, decoded in hardware at a $200 price point. Now, if you are just trying to play back stuff from Netflix and other streaming services, this is more than adequate, of course, but uh, for folks that might have some of this newer formatted video in their collection, uh, this $200 laptop will play it and you can even output it 
uh, through the HDMI port there. I don't believe it'll do more than 30 hertz at 4K, but you can output 1080p 60 uh, through that port. And if you do have some of these videos to play back on a larger screen, I think it's going to do quite well, surprisingly so, given the price point. And if you're a fan of alternative operating systems, I've got good news. It looks like Ubuntu, at least, runs just fine on here. Audio works, Wi-Fi works, as well as Bluetooth, and it appears that uh, the video hardware is also properly rendering at 1080p here. So this is actually, I think, a pretty decent little Linux device, too. So that's going to do it for the new Acer Aspire 1, and I uh, like the price point. I'm not crazy about the screen, and I do wish it had a little more storage. And I could actually give the screen a pass if it did have maybe 64 gigs of storage. Even if it costs an extra 25 bucks or so, I think having that little bit of extra storage will make a big difference for this computer's usability. But still, at $220, I'm quite pleased at the performance on this one, and it's definitely something to keep an eye out for if you're looking for a basic Windows laptop at a good price. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.